Biotech and pharma CEOs, doctors and investors have converged on MIT's campus in Cambridge for the first ever STAT Summit. Meg Terrell joins us now uh, there with a special guest. Hi, Meg. Good morning, Joe. We're back at your academic home here at MIT, and joining us now is the Bluebird CEO, Nick Leshley. Nick, thanks for being here this morning. Thank you, Meg. So you guys have what some have called one of the most expensive drugs in the world. You priced it at $1.8 million. It's a one-time treatment. It's going to launch in Europe next year. Um, tell us about, since you introduced that price a couple months ago, um, how the conversations around that have gone. Well, the conversation, I understand that, look, it's a big number, right, and it's expensive. Uh, we also have to look at sort of what's behind it. Right? What's the value of a one-time potentially cure? And when you think about that number, you have to think about the lifetime cost of that patient because we're treating the patient one time with the hope of curing them for the rest of their lives. So how do you think about supporting and, and sort of reimbursing the innovator reasonably, but at the same time, how do you really think about making sure that the system gets significant value from that? And so what we actually did was, I know that number sounds big, but we actually said, let's spread it over five years. Let's only have one payment actually be due if it, if it uh, sort of upon treatment, and the rest are 100% at risk. Only if you're cured do you end up actually paying the $1.8 million over time. And in this case, you're right, the conversations have started in Europe. And actually, they've been tremendous because this notion of value-based payment over time at risk is new, but it's important, right? It's an important way to think about how do you get these highly innovative drugs access into the system, but still reward the innovator so we can do it again and again. And how do you be reasonable about it? So you're not getting paid for the rest of your life right on this medicine that you actually define up front what the value is. We all understand it. And that's sort of the approach that we're trying to take to actually balance all the stakeholders. So yours is one of the first gene therapies to reach the market, but there are dozens more in the pipeline, including everything you're focusing on being a one-time personalized therapy. How do you see the sort of scale tipping toward this personalized one-time treatment for medicine? And how do we pay for that as each one will potentially hold price tags of a million to two million dollars? I think the first thing to focus on, if we have a whole bunch of cures that come out through gene therapy and other modalities, as a human being, that's exactly where we want to go. As a physician or as a, a sort of anyone in the medical system, that's what you want to do, one and done, right? If we can actually get to that point where we're fixing diseases, that's a great thing on a sort of societal level. You're right, we have to figure out how do we pay for it. But don't forget, all these diseases cost an amazing amount of the system. So if you zoom out one notch and say, paying a certain amount up front for a potential cure, and then they have a lifetime savings. The pharmacoeconomics were sort of what the sort of the what should you be willing to pay for that? Actually, on each of these medicines is tremendous. But we need to make sure that the reward over time actually is not egregious, right? And that's what we're trying to make sure the upfront industry is doing better at, and it's not. We've, there's some behaviors that still go on in our industry that are simply not good enough, and I'm trying to be vocal and lean into those and say those behaviors need to stop. Mm. Well, here in the U.S., of course, you've got several drug pricing proposals on the table, including one from Nancy Pelosi, and there is discussion around if that were implemented, there would be fewer drugs developed as a result, and some stories, including from Stat News, whose conference we're at today, saying that Democrats are saying maybe that's the trade-off we want to make. Maybe if we have eight fewer drugs a year for lower drug costs, that's worth it. What do you think? I'm a big fan of, look, I get why that's happening. It's very understandable why there's sort of an energy in the system here saying enough's enough, we can't pay for this over time. But I'm not a fan of sort of market crashing in on it and regulating it because it will have a pretty dramatic effect on innovation over time that I think we'll end up regretting as a society. But how does industry kind of realize what's going on and say, listen, there are too many, there's too much profit taken going on, bluntly, right? And across, let's say the top 10 biologics, there's too much money coming off the table over too long a period. So we need to do better about leaning into that, curtailing it, but not throwing out the highly innovative medicines and the science by regulating this right up front. It's going to cause people not to lean in and not to innovate and not to invest. All right, Nick Lashley, thank you so much for joining thank us. for having me.